We shall be reading from the book of Daniel, chapter 4, and verse 18. The book of Daniel, chapter 4, 18. Chapter 4, the book of Daniel. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, declare its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation. But you are able, for the Spirit of the Holy God is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached the heavens, and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely, and its fruit abundant, in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and in whose branches the birds of the heaven had their home. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And, inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him graze with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O King, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the King. They shall drive you from men, your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and thou shalt make you eat grass like oxen. Thou shalt wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you. Till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses. And, inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be a sword to you, after you come to know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous, and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of the twelve months he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my, my mighty power and for the honour of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and thou shalt drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like the bird's claws. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honoured Him who lives forever. For His dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to His will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth no one can restrain His hand or say to Him, what have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, 
my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles restored to me. I was restored to my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all of whose works are truth and his ways justice, and those who walk in pride he is able to put down. Amen. Let's read also one verse from the book of Psalms. Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. Two men chosen of God. One is called David, in which God cried out when the time came when the kingdom of God had to be created on earth which would last until eternity through Jesus Christ when he turned his eyes and tried to find because God tries to find my brethren he tries to find people in which he will cooperate with he must co-work with him because the work of God on earth is done by God of course, through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, but with the necessary participation of men and women, men and women who are ready, not depending on whatever abilities that you have, whether it's economical, or spiritual or bodily abilities that might have they are ready to do one thing or the will of God that's why God cried out when he found David I found David the son of Jesse a man like my own heart a man who has a heart which is according to mine and what I desire and want that's what he desires and wants and what I do as a result of my desire, that's what he will do as a result of his own desires. People who have the same heart. And God was amazed, and God was happy, and God chose a shepherd boy, the youngest of the family of Jesse, down there, somewhere in Judea. He kept sheep, God chose him. He wrote his name in the book of life. And he decided, God decided to use him in his work. Because this man was about to be completely obedient to the word of God as it is expressed by his word and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And he chose him and made him king. And so the shepherd boy with a few sheep became King David. And not only Prophet David, the man who was chosen and the beloved of God. From the seed in which, in the flesh, Jesus was born. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The incarnated Word of God. It's amazing how God uses some people so glorious, but this, my brethren, isn't showing partiality. This is the grace of God and the glory of God. And David had learned one thing in his life, my beloved brethren, in this everyday, continual relationship and cooperation and adoration towards God, one thing he had deep in his heart, that the glory belongs to no other person but only to God. And he knows, as we read in his psalm, it is good to sing praises to our God. It is pleasant to glorify God. It is beautiful to praise His name. It is good, good in our lives. The more you glorify God, the more victorious you will be, and God will give you victories in His name. David praised God when 
at a young age, God freed his few sheep in which his father had entrusted him with from the mouth of the lion and the mouth of the bear. He did not say, I killed the lion and the bear. He said, the Lord help me kill them. And when later on he was found before Goliath, he glorified God. When he delivered him dead at his feet, that three meter tall man who reproached God's armies. And with that faith, he said, You come against me, Goliath, with your height, with your power, with your strength, your experience, and with your weapons, which are strong. But I, I am coming against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And who will win this battle? He who has God with him. And David knows. Glory belongs to God. He doesn't say, as people say today, what are you doing? Praise God will, but his glorification comes from his soul, comes from his heart. He adores God. He loves God with all his heart, his soul, his mind, because he has known that God is alive, true, and he is his helper. That's why David doesn't hesitate to say and cry out, blessed is a man who God is his helper. Listen, helper to man is the Lord of hosts. What else could we possibly ask for than for God to be our helper? But there's also another chosen man from God. Nebuchadnezzar, who has nothing to do with the people of God, the people of Israel of the Old Testament. But he's a man who God again will use him for his work. He will deliver him in his hands all the earth. He will give to him victories because through him, Judgment will come to the backslided people of God, Israel, who must go through captivity so they can return to the truth, to the glorification of the one true God. His name, Nebuchadnezzar, Babylonian, a man who also started humbly as a soldier. But God gave him the kingdom of the earth. He knew God through Daniel, repeatedly. But the time came now, my beloved brethren, for Nebuchadnezzar to know how to glorify and praise God. It is a necessity, and that's a message from heaven today, very important and very specific and very simple. It is necessary, my brother, for you to learn how to glorify God with all your heart. It's good. It will be good for you in your life. The enemy will flee. You will be victorious. It is good. Your heart will fill with joy. You will be always pleased, always happy when you glorify God. And it is a necessity. It is a complete need and your obligation because only to Him belongs the glory, the honor, the adoration and worship. Take, take any kind of adoration and glorification to any face. Gather all these things in your heart and all together with all your soul and with all your heart that glorification offer it to him. And Nebuchadnezzar must learn this so God can continue blessing him. He must learn this. And there are two ways for us to learn, for man to learn how to glorify God. One way is through faith in the name of the Lord of hosts. And the other way through severity, through strictness, judgment, through chastening, and through trial. Without glorification, you don't enter heaven. Without glorification, you don't receive the Holy Spirit. Without glorification, you don't obtain God's blessings. Without glorification, you will not be part in the rapture of the church. Glorification is a necessity and the only characteristic which God sees. And his heart opens and he sends his blessings so you won't have a place to put it. Sing to the Lord in every way, with all your heart, with all your soul, God cries out. And David says, my soul praises the Lord, sings praises to God. A Christian isn't a Christian without glorification. He's miserable. 
He's not a Christian. He's not victorious. A Christian is always victorious. Of course, we'll bring our petitions before God through supplication and prayers. Whatever we need, but with thanksgiving. So the peace of God can come and flood our hearts. A Christian cannot but have gratitude towards God who loved him, who drew him with mercy. A Christian cannot be someone who complains, grumbles, unprofitable in the presence of God. In the presence of God, a Christian takes out of the depths of his heart glorification. Are you pleased that Christ saved you? Are you happy? Have you acknowledged what you would have been if Christ wasn't in your life? Have you realized? Have you understood what it means for your name to be written in the book of life? Have you understood what it means? A living hope that all of a sudden the trumpet will be heard from heaven and your mortal body will be transformed into immortality and your corruptible body will be put on incorruption. You know what this means? And you do not glorify God about it. My beloved brethren, it's not only necessary, but it's also useful. It's good to glorify God because God will make us otherwise. He will make you offer to Him the glory, the honor, the adoration, your life. He will make you. He will make us like Nebuchadnezzar. And all of a sudden He sees a dream. He sees a tree very high. It reached the heavens with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit so that all the earth ate from it. And under the shadow of the branches the birds found rest. The beasts made their homes under that tree. An amazing tree. And all of a sudden a voice is heard from heaven, from a watcher, a holy one, an angel. Chop it down. Destroy it. Cut the branches off. Scatter the leaves. Destroy its fruit. But leave its stump and roots in the earth. And the dream was so strong that Nebuchadnezzar was frightened and he knew that God was speaking to him because God speaks through dreams once and twice but man will not understand and he called all his soothsayers, his magicians and sorcerers, the wise men from Babylon and said come and explain to me this dream and no one could because the revelations of the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit can interpret them there are no dream tellers Dream tellers are for those outside, outside of the presence of God. But there is a Holy Spirit who interprets, explains, reveals, guides man towards the kingdom of heaven. And then Nebuchadnezzar knew Daniel, who the Holy Spirit of God was upon and said, Come Daniel, because I know very well that the Holy Spirit is upon you and you can explain to me this dream. And he described it to him. And Daniel had the revelation from God and knew the message which God sent to Nebuchadnezzar. He loved Nebuchadnezzar because many times he had helped Daniel and many times God had used Daniel for Nebuchadnezzar. And he said to him, May this dream be for your enemies. This dream, my king, is you. You reach into the heavens. You have so many leaves, so much fruit, so much glory. All the earth knows you and hears about one face, you, specifically you. But even though you were blessed so much by God, and you knew that God is alive, here's the truth. 
He can work with man. You have understood yet that the kingdom on earth is in his hand. He gave it to you and he gave it to the most humble of men. But he who gave it can take it away also. That's why. Because you have understood this yet, you cannot glorify God. And this is what you lack and it's great. You think that you are. You did all this. That you succeeded until now. All these good things. But the truth is that God gave you all these things. Because only from the Father of lights come every good and perfect gift. And it's something, my brethren, that we must learn today. Understand it, believe it, and give glory to God about it. There is nothing good that has happened in your life and God hasn't given it to you. Nothing at all. What? You're educated. You're handsome, beautiful, you're great, you're wise. You've got a good job. You've got a nice family, nice children. Whatever good you have, give glory to God. He gave it to you. He gave His grace because He wants to co-work with you from tomorrow and from then on. But His cooperation must start from your glorification. From your acknowledgement of His blessings towards you. And learn even more, whatever bad things you have, you have chosen it from the world. You have chosen it, you took it. And now you can glorify God for all that is done. But you can also reject all the bad things with your repentance to Him. You returning to Him and you testifying His holy name. That's why Nebuchadnezzar, I have advice for you. Break off your sins. By being righteous, do what's right. Do what you have to do. Do the will of God. So, every hint of sin can be off you, so it can vanish. And so, every hint of iniquity can be off you also. Show mercy to the poor, those who are in need. Because God gives, but God also takes away. Nebuchadnezzar the king heard all these things and the will of God was executed. God speaks once and twice and seals his admonishment. And he spoke to him and once and twice and even more. God spoke to Nebuchadnezzar with dreams and he sealed them. His admonishment with Daniel, his man, his servant. And now it's Nebuchadnezzar's turn to make a decision to glorify God. It's His responsibility now. From now on, God is waiting. And from today, God is waiting, my brethren, for our correspondence. How will we react to the Word of God? Now, all the responsibility is in the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. He knows his mistakes. He knows how to correct things. And he knows what he must do. But unfortunately, one year went by and he forgot about all these things. And you know, my brethren, what I fear to forget the word of God. He forgot all these things. He forgot them all. And in one point in time, as his kingdom was increasing and he was resting in his house, he walked around Babylon. Babylon wasn't a funny thing. It was the seventh wonder of the world. It was truly majestic. And instead of giving glory to God, who used him so he can do all these things, he said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? Let's just count how many mys and eyes are in that verse. How many mys and eyes? And he knew, and he knew who he was, what the will of God was, and he knew what God wanted from him. In that moment, my beloved brethren, a voice fell from heaven, 
now. There's no time of repentance and it's horrible to know that a time will come that there will be no time for correction, repentance and return. Now judgment is coming. And when the trumpet will be heard, there will be no time for repentance. It is judgment. And he was found, as God has said, had said, a tree chopped down, dried up. From a man he became a beast. So, his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. And he was driven from men, and ate grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. But God had given his grace, and he had said to him that this judgment would only last for seven years. Seven years will be enough for you, Nebuchadnezzar, so you can understand and comprehend that everything, everything that's good, depend on God. And when you understand this, you will return. And when you will return, you will repent. And when you repent, you will glorify me. Hallelujah. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Now, now, after all these things, after seven years, when my understanding returned to me, when I was restored in the presence of God, when he knew, acknowledged, and confessed, that everything is in the hands of God, the Lord of hosts. And what he had until now, it was good, and it was from God himself. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, because all of his works are the truth. His works are justice. He treated me well, justly. And... His ways, justice, and He is just. He judges in righteousness. You are the truth and you are just. Can we say this today, my brethren, that God is true and justice. Seven years don't have to pass for us. We don't have to wait seven years to pass for us. Today, we will say, you are just and the truth, Lord. And something else. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Dear Lord, give us a humble spirit and a crushed heart. Because, my beloved brethren, to the humble, God gives grace. But to the proud, he resists. And David said, Blessed is a man who his helper is the Lord, and this man is a humble man. Woe to the man, though, who is full of pride, who is found against God. And something else in which I must point out, finishing. Whoever is a friend of this world, he is an enemy of God. Let's reject, my brethren, every kind of pride and every kind of friendship with the world. So, God can be a helper and also our friend. Amen. And after this, let's give him all the glory. Because it only belongs to Him. The glory, the honor, the adoration, the worship, now and forever and ever. Amen.